Christians use the term Messiah, they mean the Son of God, the second person of the triune God, and who died for your sins. In Islam, that's outrageous. Muslims detest Paul more than anything. Muslims hate Paul more than Jews do. All right. Uh, one of the, there was a question that came in, and it dropped the call. It was the last call we had on, and it was basically on the Islam topic as well. And it basically has to, wants to know what is the Islamic view of Jesus? Uh, do they? I mean, how do they view Jesus? Although Christians and Muslims are both using the word Jesus, I, I'm actually correct myself because Muslims refer to Jesus as Isa. They mean something so entirely different. They're just using the same words, but they mean something. They have they have nothing to do with each other. In Islam, Jesus is not the Son of God, and he's not divine in any way. And in fact, if you want to get thrown out of your mosque, I mean, hopefully they'll 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 try to talk you out of it. But if you want to get into trouble, just say that Jesus is God, because the Quran attacks the doctrine of the Trinity explicitly. So he's not God, the son of God. There's only one God and there is no other. And I know my Muslim cousins won't be offended. They say to Christians, and they're trying to be ecumenical. They say, oh, we all believe in Jesus. We all believe in Jesus Christ. I hear it and I like, it's like, it's like scratching a blackboard. No, no. Muslims is a pushback against the doctrine of the Trinity. It's a pushback against the deification of Jesus. So in the Muslim view, Jesus is not just a prophet, but he's the highest level of prophet. He's what's called the Rasul. And Rasul means that he had a Sharia, a, um, a message, a written message. And it's not the New Testament. The New Testament is not the Sharia of Jesus. Because the New Testament, from the Muslim point of view, is complete shirk. It's because although the Trinity is not in the Christian Bible, Jesus is deified there, and that Jesus was crucified and died for anyone's sins is outrageous. And let's face it, the Gospels are all about the passion narratives with a long introduction. Just some introductions are longer than others. So I find it, I'm like going, and I tell this to my friends who are Muslim, I say, why are you quoting the New Testament? Like, well, why? So getting back to now that I've offloaded that, Muslims believe that Jesus was a man, nothing more than a man. The only thing is he's born to a virgin that they believe in. They believe that Mary, she's up there. Muslims debate whether she should be called a prophet or not. But that's not my business. The, and the only element that Jesus is in Muslim where there's any relationship to Christian, it's not really a relationship, is that Jesus never died. It only appeared that he died, but he he never died. He rather ascended. And that at the end, in so eschatological terms, he's going to return. He's actually going to get married and have kids, have a family for 40 years. Then he's going to die, according to Muslims. Then he's going to be buried next to Muhammad in Medina. And there's a grave waiting for him. Not kidding. This is what you have to be very careful of. Muslims are using the same terms like Mashiach, and they're using Messiah, they're using calling him Jesus, but it's not the same. And I think that Muslim, it's like like they care. But I think that Muslims should not say to Christians, my view, that we both believe in Jesus Christ. I hear it. And they're doing it for a very specific reason. They're not trying to be deceptive about it. I think it's part of maybe their dawa, their way of trying to reach out that by becoming Muslim, you're not abandoning everything in Christianity. But it really isn't the same. They're using the same language, but they mean something completely different. And Muslims are using the term Mashiach about Jesus, but they don't mean he's from the house of David either. So it's that's really radically different than Judaism as well. I mean, Muslims do not. Muslims know that if, you, if Jesus is born of a virgin, he can't be from the house of David. So Muslims do not believe that that Jesus was a descendant of David and he's anointed in that reason. Now, Muslim scholars do disagree over how is it that Jesus has came to be anointed. I think the the consensus, there are exceptions here, is that he is a, a kind of like a, a priestly anointed um, individual. 
Okay, that's what Muslim scholars to figure out and to work out. So you have to be very careful because Abrahamic religions are cousins, we're siblings, whatever you want to call us, but we're using the same words, but we really mean things that are really quite different. So when Christians use the term Messiah, they mean the Son of God, the second person of the triune God, and who died for your sins. In Islam, that's outrageous. Muslims detest Paul more than anything. Muslims hate Paul more than Jews do. Jews dislike Paul because he introduced idolatry to the world. It didn't start with the Trinity. Paul's the one who really infused it. And vicarious atonement, that's Pauline. And Muslims hate that. Muslims don't believe that anybody could die for your sins, but rather it's God's mercy. So they they can't. And, And the thing is that for us, Paul... Paul invented a religion that's Christianity. He's the, but for Muslims, he ruined everything in a sense. Like on the day of judgment, you don't want to be anywhere near Paul. That's for sure. But for them, for the Muslim, Paul is really the most outrageous figure in history because he ruined Jesus in a sense, meaning he ruined the message by interfering and inserting the deity of Jesus, Philippians 2, 6 through 11, the Carmen Christi. I mean, Colossians 2. I mean, it's all over. Paul is deifying Jesus. He's not, does not believe in doctrine of the Trinity. It's not the same, but he's inserting idolatry into it. It's there. It's very easy to figure out how you go from Paul to Ignatius and from Ignatius to Tertullian and from Tertullian to the Council of Nicaea. You see exactly what the nightmare where this is going. Anyways, great question. Thank you. Thank you.